Suppose you're asked to graph something like sine of x plus pi over 2. Now one way to handle that would be just to think about your basic shape or the shape of the basic graph y equals sine of x and then perform a horizontal shift left pi over 2 units because you've got this plus pi over 2 inside the function. So um, the same rule you use for graphing algebraic functions possibly in college algebra, if you remember that, just shifting functions, you could apply here. But I'd like to show you an approach that will work even uh, once you get into more complicated trig functions, um, where it's not obvious what, uh, what the horizontal shift should be, and if there might also be a horizontal compression or, or a stretch. Okay, you do want to start the same way uh, with what I just mentioned. You want to think about the graph of just your basic function here, y equals sine of x. And so this is uh, a graph that you should memorize. Um, so the sine graph, uh, well the graph of sine is this wave, it looks like this. Uh, so first of all, y equals sine of x, it starts and ends at zero. And you get this one complete cycle that I've drawn uh, below, down here, uh, as x goes from zero to two pi. So that one complete cycle occurs as x goes from zero to two pi. The graph uh, starts and ends at zero. You've also got this x-intercept right in the middle here, so I'm going to plot that point right in the middle. Now halfway between uh, that initial value and the uh, x-intercept in the middle, you get this peak at positive one. So you get this peak you know, here. And then halfway between the x-intercept and this um, ending point for the cycle, halfway between those you get this minimum value here at negative one. Okay, and so those are the what I'm calling the five key points in the in your PowerPoint notes to graph a complete cycle, one cycle of y equals sine of x. Now, if you're asked to graph something else like sine of x plus 2, you're going to get one complete cycle for that graph as whatever's inside, since sine of x, you get one complete cycle as x goes from 0 to 2 pi. Then for sine of x plus pi over 2, you'll get one complete cycle as x plus pi over 2 ranges from 0 to 2 pi. And so you can solve this inequality. I mean, here we're starting with a, a pretty basic function. We're going to get into more complicated examples in a second. But if we just subtract uh, pi over 2 from all three parts of this inequality, then we end up with negative pi over 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to. Um, if you want to do the arithmetic here, you can turn that 2 pi into 4 pi over 2 by multiplying top and bottom by 2, and then subtract pi over 2, so you're left with 3 pi over 2. And so this, um, in some problems, you're going to be asked for the initial and terminal points for one complete uh, cycle. This is what I'm asking you for. This is supposed to say initial. It came out pretty sloppy. The initial x value is the negative pi over 2, and the terminal x value for one complete cycle is this 3 pi over 2 here.